you so calm? I'm just going to sniff your ear. <laughs> so, Zena, Keely, and Silva. Yep, yep. When did you get your first Mayax dog? December 2020, three days before Christmas. And what made you decide to have a Mayax dog puppy? Because I wanted a dog that was going to focus on me and do what I needed, which was support and not be distracted by everyone else, which most other dogs do. And what made you choose uh, a Mayax dog, which is a wolf dog in particular? What did you do to find out about them? I saw an event which was Mike's puppy party and pounded you go. Yes, she did. I did. <laughs> and I fell in love with all the information of learning and did my own research. And that's when I knew that it was probably the right choice for me. So, why did you need a support dog? Because. Uh, I was more uh, dog orientated, but um, before COVID lockdown, I got diagnosed with um, obliterated diagnosis of autism. And my focus was always animals to be calm. And that was my way of looking, when I was looking for uh, an assistance dog, it became uh, quite difficult because of what my age was that I fought and seen owner trained assistance dogs and I thought as it would be better to as I know how I am feeling is to train one to associate and learn what I deal with to, to be <laughs> Ash is just choking in the background Ash Come and sit down, baby. Good boy. So, you were diagnosed later in life with autism. Yeah. How old were you when you were diagnosed with autism? Well, good point. 23? No, 23 or 24. 23. Mm. Um, before that, you had had another dog, an older dog, that you'd had um, as an as an adult dog, didn't you? You didn't have that dog as a puppy. No. Um, and he had been very supportive mm. and helped you in lots of ways before. Yep. So you were looking for something of similar size. He was a big dog. Yeah, more or less. Reasonably big dog. And uh, but this time you wanted, tell me, you wanted to have a puppy so that you could train them yourself yeah. from the beginning from to respond specifically to you. Yes. Yeah. I think you did all right. Okay. Okay. So tell me more. Um, so as part, is this part of your autism that you have difficulty sometimes managing your mood? Would you say that's fair or would you describe it differently? I would say it's a mix of autism and my other health conditions being the whole part of hormonal imbalance. Mm -hmm. But yeah, autism to not understand how to control those emotions or the outbursts of, I would say I've been less knowing those emotions because I, my, I've, shut off emotions I bottled it up for years until they cracked so mm. more so with her um my previous dog the emotions I he didn't have to deal with what she has to deal yeah. with true he just loved everybody yeah mine okay. has she has dealt with the uncontrollable tears but then the rage yeah. but she knows if I'm in that she if I'm in full rage mode or that type of stuff I don't understand my own strength, mm -hmm. but also she moves out of the way. She knows she needs to be out of the way. She knows when to give you space. Yeah. 
I, but when I fall, I my emotions are shut off. I'm so focused on there and then. It's like don't want to be touched, and yeah. that has been more. And I don't want her touching me. Mm. So I have pushed her away. Mm -hmm. I have not noticing how much and she will sit next to her yeah. but she'll commando crawl because I don't notice it she's commando crawling towards until she's next to me and, and I'm stroking her and I've calmed yeah sneaky, yeah. sneaky. <laughs> crafty calming skills <laughs> yeah okay so yeah so you you describe it as sort of not being able to control the emotion Sometimes you get very frustrated mm. and that frustration turns into anger and having a dog that can read those cues, back off when you need it to back off, but then slowly creep back towards you and, and slowly calm you down. That's helped you realise that that's happening, I guess. Yeah. Has that made that happen less frequently then? Yeah, less. I noticed that with often that I'm not out and about without her is the need of to check my surroundings way more it's like I'm doing the whole part of having to I'm not always enjoying myself I'm focusing a lot more on everything else even including you it's I go to the point of um, it's like sometimes in certain situations it's like sometimes I'm go I need her yeah so yeah so now you're more confident when she's with you yeah. and less confident when she's not with you because you're you can rely on her to do all the risk assessments when you're out together but when you're out without her you have to do all the risk assessments again on your own yeah. and that's that's more makes you more anxious okay that's good. So how old is Silver now? Four years old. And um, would you say Silver is now, you and her are a, a team? Would probably say so. Would just, she would probably say she can't be without me and I can't be without you, her. It would just not Very be true. you. Mm -hmm. Would you say that she has any separation anxiety from you? I would say yes a bit, but I would say not to the point. I can still give her off to my mum. I can still give her off to because we've gone with that pro process because I knew at the beginning when I first started, when she started to see my triggers, she had that brain in her mind going, I need to help her continuously. And I was going, no, you can go with mum uh, and she took her at and how you say it when you're on with her you keep telling me she's done this this and yeah. this which normally doesn't she, happen she does having long walks with me when you've been out and about with your friends or things like that and we've gone gone for walks but she's still looking for her and if i go right we're gonna go and get Zena, that's it trigger and we're walking straight back to car no matter how thingy she knows sits at car waits to get in and she can't wait to see her can't wait to go back to work. Yeah. And she, even if I'm with other people, yes, yeah, she gets nervous at uh, ones because yeah. it's first time eating. But I had went to Christmas market in town. Yeah, first year. time going into town, we were in a car park. They're absolutely busy as hell. And she is checking in on every single four of us. Because to us, us complete check -in. pack was that established, but she was always focused on me. But she'd make sure because one of my other friends, she has ADHD and other stuff, she knew. And when we were together on our own, she was sat behind her making sure she's fine. But I, she's still looking at me. Yeah. So would you say that she's now in tune to, to people? She knows when people are different. Yeah. yeah. And that she's very in tune to it. She's and now she kind of adopts, adopts your groups. To, pretty much people that emotions, yes, emotions yeah. and she's in tune with people if they have a problem mum with her hip when yeah. she starts she walks through it and carries on even though it's hurting she she cuts her up going you need, you need to slow to down you need to rest yeah right yeah so that's actually a really common thing that people say about wolf dogs in general is that they seem very sensitive to their owner's needs mm -hmm. um, and very empathetic. They seem to be able to s 
empathize with us and know when we need breaks and know when we need rest even though we don't know ourselves a lot of the time so now you've had her for four years she's working with you every day um she made your life better yep would you do it all again I didn't have the puppy stage as much as yeah, you did. So. And we have thought about having another one. And you did panic on that one. So we knew we I, weren't ready for that. I did, but my she's changed my outlook a bit. Yeah, I've had a bit of a turnaround thinking, oh, worried how she's going to feel with another pup. But also in my brain, I'm thinking like you do. I feel the whole part of, I see potential in her and I do what you do and go, oh, I could see potential if she had pups there. Because my brain is, I would want more people to have what well, like I her. have. Yeah. So it's very difficult, I think, for people who look at service dogs very traditionally in, and they expect, you know, that they're in a harness and they they might be working with the blind or they, they might be working with disabled bond, people, like physically disabled yeah. people. Yeah, where the dogs have to be different. Mm. But... When it comes to working with people with autism and, and like you say, ADHD and different classes of types, different types of neurodiversity rather than being physically disabled, you think that this type of dog's worked out really well. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, saw loose dogs as well also became very popular in service because they were very in touch with human emotions and they were very good at risk assessing and working out where danger was and avoiding it and we traditionally see that now as a dog being nervous yeah. but actually what the dog's doing is saying this situation is too much for yeah. us for the whole pack whoever's with us we need to we need to find a, an alternative yeah. route or go to a different place mm -hmm. or we just need to sit and be calm or whatever it is we need to do so you think then that my ex dogs and wolf dogs, some wolf dogs, would make really good dogs for people with autism or or on the spectrum or are neurodivergent. Yeah. Good. Me too. <laughs> so we should say, shouldn't we, about Silver and how Silver got selected to be your dog? Because I don't think every Mayak's dog or every certainly not every wolf dog would make a good support dog can you remember what the things were that we looked for when we when we were trying to find the right dog for you well i don't remember much but She's i remember the fact that we weren't specifically going for a fair and rookie pairing we were going for something different but that didn't turn out right so i was wondering about these and what we're looking for she was a, a dog that was willing to want to wants to learn and the other one which I remember was not confrontational and that's one thing she shined at because of the puppy video of you feeding them chicken she was clever about it she'd let it go and then commando crawl while other two were bickering and to get that chicken she was one way she would get in the chicken but it wasn't going to be confronting it she chose to be she was quite caring yes yeah, very gentle in her approach um but clever in her approach too she was non-confrontational but but still cleverly getting what she wanted okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah that was one of the reasons the other reason one of the main reasons that we we didn't choose her as, as such but were more leaning towards her um, was that she was the dog that gave the most eye contact. She was very, um, I wouldn't say human orientated because that's not what she was. She was very handler orientated. She was very focused on the person that she was working with whereas some of the other pups were happy to just mill around and yeah, that's seek all food off that anybody. Yeah, was looking at. Well, I liked Amy. You did like Amy. <laughs> yeah, and Amy is. Even yeah, yeah. This one, though. No, she she blended into the background in my eyes. I, I she did blend. On. Yeah, yeah. chameleon. Yeah, I, I but that was the things that we thought were great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
chameleon that could blend in into any situation, focus almost entirely on the person that she was working with. She, she could block out everything else that was going on around her and just focus on getting what she wanted <laughs> um, very cleverly, uh, but without being confrontational, without making that um, anyone else feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. She was sneaky, sneaky, weaky, but clever, crafty, yeah. and she's still, calm. Yeah, she's still, and, she's still, and she's still all those things. Her, yeah. yeah, I'm very non-confrontational. Um, but still very, obviously, very handler focused. Actually, um, I see you guys fairly regularly, don't I? We meet yeah. up a few times every year, and um, she's absolutely the most handler orientated dog, wolf dog I've ever seen, ever. And that includes my Sarloose, which I thought was impossible because they are super, super one person orientated, very fixed and focused on their owners but I've never seen it work the way it works with you and Silver. I've seen her physically putting her body in in the way to prevent harm coming to you. I've I've seen her guide you away from areas and situations that were obviously too much for you, um, for your own say, emotions. Even it's not 100% happen, I don't want it to ever happen. I've got to say, if she did get attacked or, or we did, she'd take the hits. Yeah. And she, she would. will take the hits. Yeah. yeah, I think, I honestly believe that you are safer out and about with her by your side, even without your mum. I know that you'd be safe from men. I know that you'd be safe from other people who might not treat you with the respect that you deserve. And I know that you'd be safe from situations that were too overwhelming for you. She'd guide you away from them. Mm -hmm. And if you, if you were wobbly on your feet, I know she'd look after you too. So... Mum, do you feel safer yeah. having Silver with her? Yeah, very much so. Yeah. Do you feel safer when she's with you or is it just comfort and reassurance you find? It's comfort, yeah. Safety, often, often I think that she's more going to trip me over but I know she's doing it for safety reasons. She's doing her job. <laughs> I think my last question for you is... I'm covering up my mic, let me start again. I think my last question for you is um, would we've already said would you do it again mm -hmm. but would you be willing to do it um, in in a way that helps other people so would you be willing to kind of take what you've learned with you and Silver and help other people who might be looking at having a dog like this for the similar reasons um, and guide and support them through that process do you think um, it would be okay if we have another owner um, that has their own special need that you would be happy to mentor them through having a puppy and a young dog and and how that because it's pretty horrible in the beginning right <laughs> especially for people who like their days to be rigid and routine and planned and puppies don't always go along with that. So what advice would you give then now to somebody who may be looking at having a Mayak's dog, particularly because obviously we do raise ours slightly differently. I don't advocate this for all wolf dogs, but if the right puppy were to match the right person, what advice would you give them when they were taking that puppy home in the hope of making it become a support dog one day? I would say probably expect the least expected when uh, if with an autism anyway like how my brain most people will think of this when they go through their thing of everything that could go wrong it will pretty much accept that might happen and the whole part of that's what it's going to be it gets easier. we've got some kids on scooters by the way <laughs> and the dogs are like yeah whatever yeah, so it gets easier and expect things to go, not necessarily wrong, I think it's, maybe that's, more, but not how you plan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not how you plan it, it's not, but and I would, give up. it's more like not give up, but it's more like trust yourself, because you'll know, because if you go by over anyone else, it's not always going to work, because the dog is going to read you, and 
like with silver when we get another one i know it's not going to be the same as silver no it's going to act completely different and it's going to read not maybe not as well or the whole part of it's going to read completely different and act totally different it's they are quite i would say versatile to needs and they will pick up on it it's just yes the puppy stage is going to be not how you think it, it's going to go no. but you do have your support there of your breeder which i had with you and pretty much you were telling me the same thing that I should have been telling myself which is trust that I'm doing everything right because I am right. I just don't see it <laughs> no. but it, I think it was probably and it is for everybody it's doubting yourself I think the best part I learned is if you are like video your progress because what happens is you see the good bits in it mm -hmm. and then when you look back at it like with silver is you see what you don't see when you're at that moment yeah particularly for you yeah yeah yeah, yeah. okay that's good advice good advice for anybody that's doing it so you two you're talking to me um saying that you you're still considering having another but if you were to have another i'm presuming that that one wouldn't be working or would it because obviously you have such a great working dog in silver would the other one just be more of a I mean, what lay people would term just a regular pet? I would or? say the whole part of regular pet, but I would say it would be more, you want it more focused on you. I, yeah, but then I'd love a male, which we know they're not as focused. Um, they're not as good in service, yeah. no. Mine's a whole but part I'd still of... train mm. him or her, like her, and see what developed, even, even if it didn't work out. I'd, I'd still give it a go. I get a little face in. <laughs> so, so obviously, yeah, when it, when you have a support dog, I'm sure you guys are aware, and you've obviously when you've got one that is working particularly with one individual, mm -hmm. um, it's very hard to have two dogs working with one individual. Well, it's mm -hmm. impossible really because they'll they'll not necessarily get even along in that situation because. It's whose who's job is it today and it's hard to I mean, build a schedule. I think that's why I wanted maybe the other one, even if it's a boy m mum. I'm sorry, but you have autism. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it has to come yeah. from someone and I see your, me slightly sometimes in you, specifically how emotional you are now. I'm oh, I think age. that's just our age. Yeah, but, <laughs> age. but I know you have the tendencies I do, yes. but also you want what I have with silver. Yes. But you're not wanting it as full on as one with silver. So I don't Doesn't mind need it. having the pet and it might take traits and learn from yeah. silver. So you'd be happy to have another one, but for you personally, Zena, if another one was in your home, it would be more in the, the, the typical pet role. Mm. That, that most people enjoy and have a, a Mayak yeah. dog. Yeah. But they wouldn't change, doesn't change what you have and what Silver's doing no. with you. And knowing me, Silver would. She would carry on 100%. She'd carry on, but also she'd just rope in the mail too, going, Are you okay? I'm and checking them and carry yeah. on with me. Maybe, <laughs> yeah, yeah. She'd just have another one <laughs> to look after. Do, she has done that with a cockapoo, which mm. is in. She will check in on pretty much yeah. everyone. It's yeah. just how she. It is. Mm -hmm. It's always how she's been, actually. I think that's why she ended up with you guys. So that's fantastic. Is there anything else you want to say about Silver? Mm -hmm. What would you like to tell the world about her and, and what she brings to your life? Pretty much. I go, I would say that I don't see a world or future, I suppose, without her. I think I would be a lot more worse if I didn't have her. Same. It has made a big difference. And I've learned way much more with her than I have with you. I prefer physical, practical experience. And with her, you, I would say you can do, like I've said with others, when it comes to dogs, animals, specifically wolf dogs you have to have one to know exactly you can read how many textbooks it's not going to give you the experience no you're just not <laughs> no 
people think nope no <laughs> it just doesn't you do have to you do just have to live with one really to learn it um and to appreciate just mm. how it's not negative but mm. beautiful and special mm. and and it they are have an emotional intelligence way above and beyond mm. i think what most regular dogs have yeah. i would say she's not like what other people with assistant dog or other support they wouldn't see her as the ideal one but no. yes she's not perfect but i didn't ask for perfect i asked for one that couldn't do the job that i need and she does it she does it she's perfect for you yeah. <laughs> we're a weird family yeah. and she fits in perfectly good that's fantastic guys thank you very much